Hi everyone, I want to show you something amazing. So this is Google's brand new image editing capabilities that allows you to do conversational image editing. So the easiest way to describe this, you'll either upload an image onto the platform or generate an image with Google. You'll then use natural language to type a prompt to make a change in that image. The AI will then generate a brand new image with those changes without completely changing the image, which means that this is super useful for iteration or exploring different ideas now keep in mind that it is experimental it's not really something you'd use in production it's just something for you guys to try and it is completely free right now so that's why i'm showcasing it anyway i've got a whole bunch of use cases that you guys can try so let's get started so in order to access this feature, you are going to need a Google account or a Gmail account. So just make sure you're signed in. Then you want to head over to this link, which is in the description of this video. It will bring you over to this page. Now on the left hand side, you want to make sure you've got create prompt selected. And on the right hand side over here, you want to left click and make sure that you select Gemini 2.0 flash experimental. By output format, you also want to make sure images and text is enabled because that will actually allow us to generate our images and to make any changes. Right now it's completely free so you don't even need to worry about the token count. So everything is going to be handled in our prompt box over here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and generate an image. Whenever you're generating images, you usually want to start your sentence with create. So over here I'll say create a realistic photograph of a capybara relaxing in a hot spring, a cocktail's position on a rock next to the capybara and it is during sunset. I'll click on run and you'll notice that Google is actually going to generate this image very quickly. There we go, it's done. And that's because the actual resolution of this image is actually quite low res. Uh, and I guess that's some limitations that's put in place. Maybe when it becomes a paid service, you'll obviously get more options. And you can see there's also a watermark that's included on here. So that is just a limitation that you guys have to deal with. And that's why I said it is experimental. But we have gone ahead and actually generated our first image. So now I can make changes to this image using natural language. And I guess this is why people are going to like this is because it's completely non-technical. So if I wanted to swap out my capybara with something else like a Shiba Inu, I can simply just type in swap out the capybara for a Shiba Inu wearing yellow sunglasses. And then I'll just click on run and it will make that change for me. So here we go, we've got a super happy Shiba Inu, but something I want to point out over here is that you'll notice that it didn't completely change the image, right? It focused primarily on swapping out the capybara. There were some elements that got changed as well, like it made the straw a bit longer and adjusted some of the rock over here. But the color grading on this image and even the lighting being matched, I think does a very good job. You can see there's a lot of consistency with elements between these two images. Uh, so when this gets to a production level of quality, I think this is going to be extremely useful uh, for doing iteration uh, with your images and it's literally that simple to make edits on your images just by using text. Now we can still continue editing from this point maybe I want the cocktail to be a different color so I can say make the cocktail blue All right and click on run and there we go, I now have a blue cocktail. However, I think the lighting could probably be a little bit better over here. But you can see how easy this is just to make changes to an image uh, while still maintaining consistency across other elements within the image itself. Uh, so the AI does a really good job with identifying elements within an image and then changing them. So I did two more edits over here. You can see changing the sunglasses and adding on a brand new collar. But I need to mention the more edits that you start making to that image, uh, you'll actually start noticing degradation in the quality. So the quality is going to get worse. Uh, so I would maybe limit the edits to maybe one, two, or maybe three edits at the most, uh, unless you want the quality of your images to get worse. Uh, so I guess this is a limitation with this experimental version, uh, but it is something I wanted to mention. This is also very important. Let's say you made an edit uh, to a previous image and you don't like that end result. You have to make sure that you actually delete this end result if you want to edit the previous image again. So you'd have to go over here to these three dots and click on delete. And you also wanna make sure you delete this text. So now we've essentially rolled back to this image and now I can type in another prompt. Like I, like I can say, make the cocktail green. So this is important because if you liked a previous image, you can just roll back to it and then make another adjustment to essentially see another variation. So like right now, I'll be using this image again that I, that I used previously, but with a new prompt. 
And now one more tip, if you want to see all of your prompting projects, you just simply click on library and it's got a list of everything that you've been prompting over here. So you can, de you can delete that entire project or just simply open it via the library section. Now another tip, we've obviously generated images with Google, but what if I want to use my own? If you've generated an image on another platform with Midjourney or any other platform, ImageN3, you just drag and drop your image into the prompt box and then it's going to upload that image for you. Now remember, Google has some insane censorship, so don't even try and upload anything that has nudity or anything that's quite revealing. Any, anything that you try and prompt to that image is going to be blocked. Uh, but anyway, here's my own image of the Mona Lisa. So over here I can say she is wearing a red hoodie and then click on run. But now I'm just showing you that you can use your own images, but just be prepared. <laughs> like I said, the censorship is quite brutal. Uh, so sometimes your requests might be blocked, uh, but you can see over here. So there's my own image. And now I just change her item of clothing to a red hoodie. So now I could continue from here. Like I could say she's wearing black sunglasses. Then we'll take this image and put black sunglasses on her. But I can also upload another image in here and then continue from that image. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that you can supply your own images onto the platform. So just a quick tip regarding aspect ratio, since there's no way to select it. Uh, if you guys want it in a specific aspect ratio, you need to specify it in the prompt. You can see over here, if I wanted a square aspect ratio, I'll say a one by one aspect ratio, or you can maybe even say square image. Uh, remember it's AI, you can use natural language. If I want something that's wide, a wide format, I'll say 16 by nine. And if I want something that's more vertical, maybe for social media, I'll say nine by 16. So if you wanna change the aspect ratio, specify it in the prompt. Now I'll be showing you some various creative use cases that you can try. This first use case completely blew my mind, but you can actually generate multiple angles from a single image. So this is how it works. I drag and drop an image over here to upload it. And now I'm using natural language and I'm essentially telling the AI, show me a side profile of this image. And guess what? It shows me a side profile. It looks like the same person. They have the same hairstyle, the same clothing, the same lighting and the same background. But now I can see a completely different angle of this person, which is mind blowing to me. Now you can take it a step further. You can ask it to show me a rear view shot or even a front facing shot and it makes sure that it remains consistent. Uh, which is incredible. So if you guys are trying to create LoRa's for characters and you want a diverse data set, this tool is invaluable. But you can also try it with something else. Maybe you're generating a virtual mod a model that's wearing items of clothing, right? You can see I've specified what type of clothing she should be wearing, the color of the clothing as well. And then I gave it this following prompt. I said, now create multiple images that showcase the model from multiple angles, like close-up portraits, side profiles, low angle shots, close-up shots. And I said, make sure you generate individual images. And then it creates this entire catalog of images with the, the model in different poses. You know, there's shots that are focused more on the trench coat, uh, other shots that are focused on the handbag. And again, it's doing its best to remain consistent with its outputs. So <laughs> this is just mind blowing to me uh, that the AI can do this. So that's something you can try, but you're not just limited to human beings. Here's another use case with a vehicle. So I said, generate a 2002 Nissan Silvia. And I wanna see this vehicle from another angle. So I said, show me a rear view angle of the vehicle. That's exactly what it did. And you can see it's remaining consistent, even with the environment. I said, show me a three quarter front facing shot. Another one with a low angle shot that frames the front bump and the rims. And the AI is doing exactly what it's told while still remaining, uh, or while still giving me a consistent output. You can try it with interiors. So here's a cafe. I said, create a realistic image of a modern cafe. And I said, now show me another angle of the interior of the cafe. And that is exactly what it did. You can see we've still got these blue and red chairs in here, and it's doing its best to make sure that there is some sort of con a continuity between these images. So yeah, being able to generate multiple angles is possible and it's mind blowing. You can easily change someone's hairstyle. So this is the image that I uploaded. And then I basically told the AI, I said she has medium length wavy hair, now make it blonde. And you can see it preserves her likeness while completely changing her hairstyle. So now you can go wild with this. You can give them rainbow hair, red hair, or even a short baby blue pixie hairstyle. But you're not just limited to changing the hairstyle. If someone doesn't have hair on their head, well, guess what? You can actually give them some hair. So I said, give the man a brown comb over hairstyle 
and this is what it ended up giving me. Now you can take it one step further, and you can say, now give the man with a brown comb over hairstyle a red beard, and this is the image that it ended up generating. Now it's more of a, I guess, ginger or brownish beard, uh, but yeah, it adhered to that prompt and edited the image for me. So very powerful. You can make someone perform different actions within an image. So this was the image I uploaded. And then over here, I just typed in make her hold up a peace sign. And that's exactly what she's doing. And she also has the correct number of fingers, which I think is something to mention in the world of AI. Uh, then I, again, I took that image and I said make her wink with the left eye and stick her tongue out. And that's what it ended up giving me. Now this would be its own project. So I would click on create prompt. And if I'm doing another you know, action, I would click on create prompt and this would be its own separate project. So over here it says she's holding a thumbs up and smiling and that's what it ends up giving me. And <laughs> just amazing that AI can do this. Over here she's drinking a glass of red wine and over here she's holding up a sign with the Google logo on it. So you can give that a try. You can also generate different expressions, uh, but I'll be honest, I feel like it alters the face a little bit too much. Uh, but yeah, if you've got an image, you can say make her smile and then it's going to make the person smile or you can make them sad or you can make them look surprised. But like I said, I think it just changes the face a little bit too much, but it is possible to change facial expressions. You can also edit items of clothing. In this case, this was the image I uploaded and I ju simply just said change her jacket into a red puffer jacket and this is what it ended up giving me. You can see it's preserving the likeness but completely changing that item of clothing, which I think is really awesome. With Fashion Try-On, you're not just limited to generating another garment by prompting it. You can actually upload a reference image as well. So I uploaded both images at the same time into my prompt box. So I've got my model and I've got my Gucci garment. And then over here, I just typed in, make the female model wear the bomber jacket. And this is the image it generated for me. Is this perfect? No, there's actually a lot of inconsistencies over here. But the fact that it can actually do this by referencing another image of a garment, I think is amazing. Uh, so we'll see how this technology improves. But yes, if you wanted to try fashion try on with the reference image, you can do it. So give it a try. Google makes it super easy to remove and replace elements in an image. So if you guys want to remove distractions or replace them entirely, it's super easy to do. I drag and drop this image of this pink crocodile and to remove it, I just simply type remove the pink crocodile from the image. And you can see the AI does a really good job with filling in all of that missing information uh, to make it look like a coherent image where the crocodile is no longer present. Uh, I tried that as well with this one, I removed this bunny and the carrot, and you can see it just fills in all of that missing information. I tried it with this one, uh, where I wanted to remove all of the bees on her face. Now, it did manage to do that, but you can see it changed the eyes a little bit. Uh, this one's probably the most impressive result for me. I said remove the boy on the left as well as his shadow from the image. And that's exactly what it did. You don't see the boy in the image anymore, and his shadow is no longer present. Uh, so the way that it adheres to these prompts is amazing. But again, this is AI and it's not perfect. I tried this example where I tried to remove the man, but yeah, I could just not get this particular image to work. This also means that you can replace uh, certain elements within an image. So in this case, instead of having a Jack Russell uh, that I'm holding, I can now hold a ginger cat. And just simply by typing replace the dog with a ginger cat. So extremely powerful uh, technology. But if you guys ever wanted to remove distractions, you can do it very easily using Google. You can colorize an image. So I'm going to drag and drop an image over here. This is just an image I generated using Grok of Nikola Tesla. So it's a black and white image. And in order to colorize this, you just simply type colorize this image. And then I'll click on run. So sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. And that's because Google sometimes has really strange censorship. Uh, but it's actually going to go ahead and colorize that image for me. And as you can see, it's done a really, really good job. Uh, of that colorization. So this is something that you can try. You can certainly try to do mock-ups, placement and design. So in this case, I have a logo and a model wearing a t-shirt. So I dragged both of these images at the same time into the prompt box and I typed in the following prompt because I wanted to see what this logo looks like on the t-shirt. And this is the result that it ended up giving me. Now, again, it's far from perfect, uh, but for a quick mock-up, I think this does the job. I wouldn't even need to open Photoshop in this case if I just wanted to get an idea of what that might look like. I tried it as well with a can and this logo. And you can see over here, I said, put the Burbzilla logo on the red can. 
and that's exactly what it did for me right a quick mock-up with some placement if you go in the design route you could maybe have a perfume bottle and you can place it in a field of flowers uh, now again far from perfect it's not really matching the lighting that well but again this is just a quick tool that you can maybe try uh, to do some mock-ups to get a general idea of what it might look like so you can give that a try you can easily do out painting so this is a way to reveal more of an image so i uploaded this image and i simply just typed in the prompt zoom out from this image to reveal more of it and <laughs> that is exactly what it did so that's awesome i uploaded another image within the same session and it gave me another image where it zoomed out with this one i adjusted the prompt a little bit i said do a very subtle zoom out from this image to reveal more of it now i would recommend if you're going to do out painting maybe just leave it to just a single image within that session and then if you're going to do another out painted result just click on create prompt like this then you can drag and drop your image over here type in the prompt and click on run and that's what i did with this one i created a separate session just for this image to do out painting but it's definitely possible to expand that image beyond its original borders. So give it a try. So this is something else that you can do that's actually amazing. If you click on create prompt, you'll see that there is visual story. So this is the ability to generate a story with images and narratives. So if, as soon as you click on that, the AI is automatically going to generate a random story for you. So this is the story it created for me. So you can actually look at the prompt that was used and then adjust this to your own needs. But you can see I've got the name of the story. I've got the image over here or the prompt that was used to generate this image. And then I've got narrative as well. Now you could use other services like Kling or Hilo, Luma, Pika or Pixverse to do image to video so that you can actually apply motion to this image and then you can maybe use another service that does narration with text to audio like 11 labs to actually narrate uh, this dialogue and now you've got this entire story and because Google keeps you know the subject consistent you'll see that throughout all of these images over here the goat looks exactly the same right even the style of the imagery is very very similar uh, so yeah, the very, very easy way to create a story with some images and narrative. So maybe give it a try and see what you end up getting. You can also replace the background on an image. However, I think this just does not work well because it's not relighting the subject. So it doesn't look like they belong in this environment. This just looks like some cheap clip art. Uh, but yeah, it is possible. As long as you say change the background of this image and then specify what you want the background to be, you can swap out the background. The Gemini model is extremely good at generating text. It's probably one of the best platforms I've seen for generating text. You'll see if you click on create prompt, there's an option to create a birthday card. When it creates that birthday card, there's actually quite a bit of text over here uh, that's been generated and all of it is legible, which is amazing. Uh, but you can take it a step further. Maybe you can create a logo that's got some beautiful typography. Maybe it's a t-shirt design or some stickers. Or this would be like maybe a vintage poster. But if you guys want to try anything with text, this model definitely excels at it. You can try style transfer, but I'll be honest, it's not very reliable and you can't try a lot of different styles, but just experiment with this. So I saw this on X by Johan Ku. So credit to him for actually testing this. And I wanted to give it a go. So you can upload an image and you can say something like, turn this image into a black and white charcoal sketch and you'll get an output like this, which look quite, it actually looks quite cool. Uh, then you can actually refine the line work. Uh, so maybe this is something, you know, baseline for digital illustration or something for a coloring book. And then you can even say, complete the illustration by adding simplified color, shading and lighting. Now, I'll be honest, it looks like a different person. Uh, but it is possible. You can turn an image into a sketch and then vice versa. You can turn a sketch into a completed image. Uh, so I just thought I would highlight this if it's something that you want to try. Okay, so that's going to be the end of this video. Now I'm really looking forward to seeing how this technology improves. Of course, there's limitations. I mean, we've got this low quality outputs, there's watermarks, and then the censorship can be absolutely brutal. Uh, but again, Google makes the rules, so we have to abide by them. Uh, but anyway, you guys let me know what you think about this, uh, this technology. I think it has so much potential. And yeah, if you guys have any other use cases, drop it down in the comments down below. Anyway, you guys are super awesome. So stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials. And goodbye.